Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, we could really use your help. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, recently named the Two Opinionated Podcast one of its top 100 podcasts. This is a monumental feat for this program. You know, we're a father and son team out of a small town in West Virginia, have been doing this for about five years. There's 15 million podcasts out there. About 40,000 of those get to the point that they're listed on IMDb. Out of those 40,000 out of the 15 million, we are ranked number 82. Something that we're just immensely proud of. We're so thankful for our listeners, our watchers, our fans. Thank you so, so much. If you would like to help us out and we're asking for it, please. Um, it's easy. It's real, it, it's really easy. It's free. If you go to IMDB, that's IMDB.com, look up two opinionated podcasts and just take a look at the page. That's all you have to do. I mean, you're welcome to look at the cast, look at the episodes so you can kind of see who's been on the program. Do whatever you want, but even just bringing up the page, imdb.com, Two Opinionated Podcast, bring up the page, look at it. That helps us so much. So please, if you can do anything, we would really appreciate that. Um, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Love to have your subscription there. It's also free. And you can also check out our website, MeisterCon.com, where you'll find almost 700 episodes, audio and video, available on there. There's also a terrific blog from Brett, and it'll let you know anything that we have going on in studio, if we're covering a convention, if we're going on location, anything that we have going on will be on the website, MeisterCon.com. Thank you guys so, so much. We appreciate you so much much. I, I can't express enough how appreciative we are of all of you. We never, never expected to, to do as well as, as we have, and that's all because of you. Thank you so much. Enjoy that interview. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. So excited today. I've got Bryce and Catherine Denny with me. So welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. So it's probably I, I love this this whole story and what it is you're you're doing, but it's probably easiest if I let you introduce yourself. So talk a little bit about what it is that both of you do. All right. So I'm an electrical engineer during the day and a <laughs> um, an amateur musician at night. <laughs> so I have sort of the the dual life there. Well, and, when you um, so when you were growing up, were you were you playing in like school band that type of thing? Oh yeah, yeah. I started playing piano, you know, at age five or something. Mm -hmm. My my parents were were musical, and there was always stuff going on, and uh, so I was I was in the band, and and uh, actually, marching band was a big was yeah. a big thing for me in once we were in high school, and um, and that was sort of a social and and uh, musical. Um, connection to to everybody at that point yeah I, my uh, uh stepkids were both in in band and probably the most impactful thing that they did growing up i mean they just absolutely loved band and it formed a lot of the things that they're into as adults right yeah i spent about 20 years teaching elementary school music including Ooh. um beginning band which was just an incredible experience because i really felt as if it gave kids a sense of community and identity yeah. that you know they they were sort of like the band groupies you know they would sit there off stage with their instruments like i can't wait until it's my turn and they they would be so excited about their performances meanwhile the parents are like oh wow beginning yeah. it can be pretty rough but, but there at just... the beginning <laughs> <laughs> yeah and she had to talk over the saxophones <laughs> <laughs> try not to but yeah. yeah that's that's i i've seen a few of those beginning uh you know band classes and they're pretty rough but they're fun and and you know yeah. at this age yes. the kids they don't get too frustrated you know they get it they're mm -hmm. learning so they it doesn't bother them that it's not and honestly I've grown to love that sound, you know, that yeah. first fourth grade band rehearsal where they're all going, blah, 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 
<laughs> I mean, it's beautiful in its own way. <laughs> Do you ever uh, get to see those, you know, the kids that come through as they get older and, and kind of see oh, yeah. how they've improved through the years? I think that's kind of neat. Yeah, social media has been great for that. I've seen a bunch of my kids, um, you know, some of them are getting married. A few of them have kids of their own. Um, and it's really exciting to see which ones continue in music. One of them is actually um, facilitating concerts at Symphony Hall. And, oh, that's awesome. Um, you know, it's it's really exciting. Well, so I, I think the two of you have got a, a really unique, interesting story. I, I love, and it kind of, took place around the pandemic. You know, a lot of us had to figure some stuff out around that time. But talk about that because you did a really neat thing, I think, with the uh, uh, choirs, which, you know, I remember that time in 2020 when churches were trying to figure out what to do as far as, as getting, you know, could they get together? You know, was it safe to to get together? Could could they get together and, and sing, uh, especially? And you heard those stories where choirs were getting together and everybody was coming down with COVID and stuff. So, but talk a little bit about the, you know, kind of the solution you found for some of that, you know, what brought that about, you know, what it is you did. Well, so er early on, we, we, of course, everybody was hearing the stories like that and wondering, gosh, what, what does this mean for, the music community how right. can i how can we do the things that we would normally be doing so for me i mean i have a i have a day job that that fortunately was not canceled um, right. in engineering but everything that catherine did both her her hobbies and her work were just <laughs> were just disappearing you know? i was first in theater i was in four different shows at that time and they all just wow. stopped, yeah stop 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 gone like, what? well and it was so <laughs> sudden you know, we would none of us were really prepared for that. I know. Right. We wouldn't have believed, right, that that someone, you know, schools would go on to spring break and never come back. Right. What? And like you'd never believe it. The entire month of April disappeared. Yeah. There was nothing going yeah. on. So so but we um we found that people, you know, we tried the virtual choir thing and the first time we did that a lot of people were like oh this is so much fun and the fifth time we did that it was like oh this is not so much fun. it was kind of like the really... uh what's the um uh the 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 zoom meetings that we had early on where everybody was drinking the wine you know they were getting the, everybody was excited <laughs> they're getting together and having their wine and then after a couple of times those just kind of petered out right and we tried Zoom chorus rehearsals, like, oh, let's sing together. Ready? Sure. Go. And it was like, ooh, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you got some <laughs> lag issues there that could cause some problems. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, and yeah. it's not too bad when you're having a back and forth conversation. But if we try to say something at exactly the same time, it doesn't work. No. So, so we ended up starting, um, we, we did a few living room recitals. We have this lovely piano behind us and, yeah. and we basically set up a camera and did a Facebook live and said, we're my whole family. We have, we had two teenagers who were, um, you know, really excited to be practicing their cello, yeah. their violin, their singing. And we had, we were shocked. There were 600 people who tuned into that concert on March 28th. And we were like, okay, there is literally nothing going on. That seems like a lot. It is that desolate, right? And so we're, okay, that was fun. Let's do another one. Yeah. And in the second one, we, uh, my daughters and I made a little choir where we all sang in harmony and Bryce played the piano. And that was fun. And then we did one piece where one of my daughters has a lower voice and she sang tenor. And so we had this SETB chorus. And when we posted it online and when we had the feedback of people who were like in our live, they were saying, I miss that harmony. That is like such a sensation that I used to be addicted to. And I have, I'm like starving for that choral structure. Yeah. So we started thinking. We were, well, we were just, we were lucky that we had musicians in the house. I mean, most, many people, they, you know, they, they have to go somewhere in order right. to do music and you couldn't go anywhere. Um, but we, we did so. Our, our our daughters at that time were were you know early high school, mid high school yes. age, yes. and um, that that turned out to be important later because as, as we as we started 
trying to do this crazy project where we would go off, you know, for an entire weekend day or something and, and work with choirs. Um, they, they were able to sort of, you know, fend for themselves. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if we had, yeah, well, yeah. And that, that's this important. Project would never have happened, you know, and they also yeah. didn't need help with school, you know, elementary school kids, kindergarten kids really had to right. be supervised when they were navigating their classrooms, but right. both of our kids, one of them could drive, so they could really kind of take care of themselves in a way that we appreciated a lot. Yeah. We yeah. So, so you, I, I know you kind of titled it the driveway uh, choir project with that. Yep. It, it, yep. You tell me if I, if I have this right to me, what that is, is you've got people coming, you know, in their cars and you're parking close together and kind of doing your singing and stuff they're out of the vehicles. Is that right? Right. Well, it's so it started out people coming to our house. So so we after after we we sort of did as many recitals as we could stand to do <laughs> just in our own house. Um, and we start and we wanted to figure out how to go wider and include our our friends who we usually would be making music with. So I'm a, I'm a piano player. And so usually I'm either accompanying a theater chorus or I'm sometimes playing with a small group or something. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm always playing piano with people. And, right. And, but the, they were all isolated. Everyone's isolated. Um, so we, we found that, so the, the first driveway choir was for, for us was that we invited three friends over and we, we got a bunch of, we, we sort of figured out how to get microphones and headsets and things we have these kind, gaming headsets kind that... of like this oh said, yeah okay it ha so there has to be a way and that if if there are four people wearing these things they'll be able to hear each other and there'll be no lag because it's all wires and not like, i never even thought of that yeah if if you couldn't hear the other people singing that's going to cause problems right well right it was especially problems for singers like you know we were just talking about marching band instruments play pretty loud they can play yeah. outdoors and hear each other um, but right, singers, there were porch concerts. You could just be ten feet apart, and you could hear each other yeah, really you well. Hear, yeah, you could hear. Yeah, it's it's much harder for singers, and it, it, you know they 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 they're used to hearing each other and sort of depending on each other in a choir. Right. You not well, ever kind of this close to your fellow singer, right? Not everyone <laughs> in a choir wants to be or 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 will ever want to be, um, you know, singing all by themselves. They want to sing in a group, and they want to hear the other people around them, um, and not just, you know. The, the virtual choir where you record yourself in isolation and then later put it all together that just was not a choir experience at all yeah right. yeah so the, so the driveway thing the first the first driveway choir for us was three of Catherine's friends we gave them the headsets and and I was the tech guy I, I sort of figured out how to get a mixer to to um, mix their sounds and send it back into their headphones for me that was a big stretch I had done recording before but right. I've never done anything with live sound and um, and never used these kinds of headsets. And so it was it was a stretch for me. But but being kind of a, a tech guy and like liking to figure out new stuff, that was kind of an interesting challenge for me to sure. to, uh, you know, go go research and read some some stuff and look at YouTube videos and order a few things and try it out. You know, that, that was kind of that was up my alley. Yeah. Um, and of course, we posted videos about like oh look at this three people who came to my driveway we're singing in a chorus and and shortly after we posted our first video like that we were introduced to a guy named David Newman in in um Virginia who had done something very similar where yeah. he invited a bunch of people to his neighborhood and he was conducting and they were singing and and he had approached it differently using wireless microphones and that became we could, we ended up meeting with him and like getting the details awesome. so that we yeah, meeting with him the way we are meeting with you now right. across the country. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and thank you, COVID. This has become a very useful tool to be able to. Well, I know, and, and you know, we started using Zoom in 2020, just like everybody else did. And it, yeah, thank goodness that it's that nice. Yeah. That or or 2020 could have been worse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it was really um, nice when once we had wireless microphones, he also showed us how to use an FM transmitter yeah. so that you want to talk about how that happens in your car. So a, a lot of churches by that time were already using FM transmitters to have a drive like a, a parking lot service. Right. And um, 
And so FM transmitters were easy to find and lots of people were out there explaining how to use them. So you could just plug in your mixer to an FM transmitter and then any number of cars in the area can listen in. You, you find a temporary radio station that nothing else is using at that time in that place and you just broadcast on it for a while and it's, it stays very local so only people nearby can hear it. Um, but that that helped us. So with, with wireless microphones, you know, everybody in their car with a holding holding a microphone and then radio we didn't have wires anymore so we didn't have to do all this setting stuff up getting everything dirty and, and wet and messy um and then you could, could hear the mixed choir coming out your radio and it was really fun oh that's kind of neat yeah so you're singing yeah. in the car but then you can hear everybody together coming through the radio that's... and you can see the conductor yep. so you're really doing the same so it was it it really helped people to feel as if they were singing together even if they were in an adjacent car love that and yeah. it was incredible how many times so so the first time we kind of packed everything in our suv and went to a different place right to like give this choir their own experience it was uh, in like Life changing. I mean, there were tears. They there were, all were like, honk, like <laughs> celebration. Like this is a joyful noise. We're so excited, and we were just like, okay, the, people want this. Yeah, this is like a gift we can give them. You know. <laughs> yeah. And they were they were starved for you know human connections of any sort. Yeah. And and being able to make music with anyone at all, it was they, they didn't. Nobody else. Nobody really knew how to do that and how to do it safely. And this just worked. It was weird. <laughs> it was definitely weird looking, um, but but it worked really well. Did you have and, and some then, come yeah. to watch, like that weren't participating, but just came to kind of hear the music? Sometimes. And as we grew, like, you, you know, projects like this always start small. And then we're right. like, oh, well, what if we could do 32 <laughs> mics? And what, what if we could get 50 people to come? What if we could? And and by the time, like the, one of the, I think the largest event that we ran was the Messiah. Because if you think about a typical December, you have 20 choices of different places to go oh, to hear the Messiah, yeah. right? There was nothing. And there was actually one, there was a, a recorded thing in a, in a concert hall where they had four singers really far apart and a bunch of instruments playing the orchestra. That was cute. It was nice. But in terms of participating, we just opened, we, enough people had heard about us by that time that we were like, okay, November 19th, December 19th, we're going to this random parking lot in Bolton, Massachusetts. It's huge. Sign up if you want. We had 160 people come and Amen. only 32 of them had mics. But if you didn't have a mic, you could just have your score. You could turn, tune into the radio. You could see the conductor and you could have that singing experience even if we didn't record you so it was really amazing. i mean in that that particular instance it's it's better i think than going to 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 watch a, a choir because you can actually participate <laughs> you i mean if you were in right. you know in right singing your car no one can hear with them. yeah you just sing with them yeah, yeah. Some, some people would say i don't want a microphone but i but i'm definitely gonna sing you know that's yeah that worked too. And actually there was one guy who, cause we hired soloists to sing all the every valley, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, and one of the guys who didn't have a microphone was like, yeah, I sing all the tenor solos. Nobody else knew that. <laughs> I love that. So yeah. That's, that's awesome. It, is it, is it something that, you know, now that we're kind of back to normal, are you still doing, or was that just kind of a moment in time <laughs> type of thing? I think it was a moment in time there. It's, I'm not, I'm never going to say that it's better than just being in a room. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> um, the only, no, no one's, no one's singing in cars that I know of, but although I, I have heard of one group that enjoys doing, they, they, they learn to do sort of radio show kind of style um, concert where they would invite people to, to listen in their cars. And, and some people do that just for fun, you know, like drive in movies, you have people listening yeah. on their radio yeah. to hear the sound. Right. And um, and so, you know, once in a while, they'll just do a radio show style concert just for fun, but they don't have to all be isolated anymore. Right. But they can still do the the uh, stay in your car, you know, feel of it. Yeah, I, I, I love the whole concept and good for you for for thinking of it. And then 
at some point you decided you were going to make it into a documentary. <laughs> yeah. So this is I, that happened kind of as the pandemic was subsiding a little bit. Like yeah. we yeah. started to see that there wasn't quite as much. Uh, we still had events through June, but then in Massachusetts, the mask mandate was list, lifted in the middle of June. And we were like, you know, and um, I feel like it was so common for news media to pick up this story. Because if you remember 2020, 2021, there was almost no good news, you know? Yeah, it was and rough. so it was like, oh, <laughs> look at this choir in Florida. It's so sweet. Look at this choir in Michigan. They did this cool thing. And, and I feel like that was a pretty common thing. They even came and recorded one of our events for the Today Show. But I felt like, all of those little three, four minute stories sounded as if it was one group. And we could see at the whole spread. Like after we met David Newman, we met Christian Hunter, who was in the barber, a barbershop harmony society. We let met Don, you know, who all of these people, and we saw how it moved across the country and how different people would just go online and see the videos read the manuals and buy their stuff and be like, hey, guess what, Bryce? We just built the system that you thought of. Thanks for the idea. You know, so it was- So I, I was the, I, I want to say, David, it's David Newman's idea. Right. And, and I I wrote it all down and explained it and made like a, a document that would help people buy the right stuff and hook it up just right. Right. Um, so it, it was, this was, a, it was kind of funny. It was kind of invented in two places at the same time. Um, David Newman was was doing things like this in Virginia, but we didn't know about him. And then we started doing it in Massachusetts, but we didn't know about him. And so, and once once we met, we sort of combined forces and and um, we were shared, a lot more sloppy than he was. <laughs> we, we we sort of shared the best ideas from both. And um, I, see, I love and, that part of it. Yeah, yeah. it's it, it was there was a lot of collaboration, and there there was none of the sort of you know I think I'll patent this now. It was all it, all of us were at that time were in the mindset of you know, can anyone save the music world? You know, yeah. it's a disaster and we all have to work together on this. So no, I don't know anybody who who didn't just share everything that worked and everything that failed. It, it was it was a very collaborative thing. Yeah. Mostly was... of people that didn't even know each other through social media. Uh, right. So that was, that was a fun part of it. That, and I, that, think, I think that's the best part of it. It's just that yeah, and I think the nobody tried to, to like monopolize it. They just shared it. Right. right. And I think the documentary came from that camaraderie and the fact that in this really isolating time, all these people met each other and worked together yeah. for the purpose of preserving music for human consumption. Because, you know, there were so many things that you could watch online, like the Metropolitan Opera had an opera every night. You could be like, wow, this is yeah. great. But doing it yourself. That's, that's passive. Yeah, like consuming things is not the same as participating in that's something right. that requires a lot of energy from a lot of different people. So I felt like that that is really the message behind the documentary is that, first of all, people need music. And that people who work together can really find a way to, uh, you know, do what what they need to do. Yeah, yeah. So the documentary is called "The Drive to Sing," which I love it. That's that's perfect. Uh, <laughs> so, is it complete? Is it out there where we can watch it yet? Yes, it is. So the, the we finished the movie at the end of 2021. Yep. And then in 2022, um, we we spent. A good half a year getting music licenses that was fun um and and applying to film festivals and going to some film festivals um we we showed it in in i, I think it was about five states there there was there was a premiere in boston there was one in new york there was one in new virginia Jersey. yeah i mean i love in, the fact that virginia. you just came up with this idea and look at everything it led to I mean, yeah. you know, it's it, been a couple years now and you're still you're still getting benefits. That's awesome. And we're still, every time a group watches it, there's this emotional, like there yeah. are tears, there are, and, and a lot of people have said, yeah. you know, I didn't realize that there was this collective trauma that the music world went through and nobody wants to talk about it. 
but it it feels great to talk about it because now we're beyond it and we've sort of learned how much we right. need music. You can, you can look back. We, yeah. I think we we forget what it was like in 2020 because the recovery has been so like gradual. Right. To, you know, but, you know, there were people wiping down their groceries and leaving it on the floor for three days just in case because nobody knew which things were the ones to be terrified about. Yeah. And so people were just worried about everything. And um, so we we went out of our way um, when we if we were doing a, a choir with with microphones, you know, we would we would have alcohol wipes and like while the while the people were watching, we would sit there and and wipe them down just to make extra super sure that that everything was clean and that they could see that it was clean. Right. Um, there were there were some people who the, were afraid um, to leave their house for any reason at all, and and sometimes they would be they would feel okay with okay, I'll drive to this parking lot. Someone will hand me a thing that they just cleaned off and then I'll sing and then I'll give it back. They were okay with that. Right. Um, but, you know, it was, a, it was a scary time for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's worth mentioning that we, we really appreciate, we, and when I use the word we, I mean all of the people who have been in this uh, driveway choir world, you know, that it yeah. spread across the country. We are so grateful to the chorus in Washington that had the tragic, you know, as you said, a lot of people getting COVID and some people dying because they had what that one extra rehearsal. If they had been quiet about it, so many more people would have right. died. They, they let yeah, the press right. come and say, we made this mistake. We didn't know it was going to happen, but this is what happened. And they, that Skagit Valley um, Corral, is that the name of it? Washington. Saved millions of lives. That's yeah, right. that's, that's a good point. I, I hadn't thought of that, but you're right. If they had uh, done what happens a lot of times and just kept it close to the vest, it yep. may have yeah. just kept happening. Right. That's right. That's right. right. And, and, you know, it was so heartbreaking to hear that the webinar that where everybody was like, okay, guys, this is going to be two years that you're going to have to, we're, we were just like, what does that mean? And yeah. that's, that's yeah. really motivated a lot of people to put their heads together. Yeah. Yeah. So, so where can we, uh, where can we find the uh, documentary? So it's on Amazon prime. Um, you can watch it there and very soon we'll be announcing that it's on a couple more platforms, but it's not, a, not out yet. I know how exciting that has. And I'm yeah. sure that, that once you got into to doing the documentary part, you, then you had to learn a whole bunch of new stuff. Because then you got to oh, yeah. oh, yeah. it, market it, all yes. that stuff. So I, I've heard that there are people who plan to do a film, <laughs> <laughs> like you outline your plot, and they, maybe they maybe like they raise money for it, and maybe they write a script, and maybe they find people who know what they're doing, and they and, use music and choose, in public domain. They choose music intentionally <laughs> instead yeah. of just whatever I've heard of happens. That. That's what we'll record. <laughs> so all all these things that um, you know if. We, I think if if we did it now, there's some things we'd do better. But it's also possible that if we knew what we knew now, we wouldn't even start. That's right. right. Yeah, know? yeah, that's right. right. And and I think that's a really interesting. We we sometimes talk about the the disconnects between expectations and reality. Like yeah. I think that if if he were a professional sound engineer, or if I were the director of a really high level professional choir, we would not have gone down this path because you you don't want to do something halfway, right? Right. But since I've grown up teaching fifth graders, you know, like elementary school and, and yeah, here are some adults who really want to sing. It, some of them didn't sound that great, but it was just this lovely, passionate energy that needed to be done. And people didn't really need it to be perfect, you know? So then when, um, when we were yep. choosing, you know, Bryce made those documents from David Newman's things it was like the lowest quality that would actually work. Yeah, we, so we that... chose we chose the cheapest mics that were good enough, the the cheapest cables, the cheapest mixers, because from from the start we wanted to find something that was that was accessible for other people to build the exact same thing without breaking the bank. We, we probably could have bought it. We we could have borrowed a really amazing mixer and and great mics and stuff, but then that wouldn't be something that that a random choir in Minnesota or whatever would be able to to afford. So I love we tried the to, fact that you thought the that lowest through. of the low first. Yeah, and I right. but you thought it through. 
you know, it wasn't like, like you could have probably gotten better equipment, but you were already thinking, right. hey, other people are going to do this. They may not have access to, to really good equipment. So let's get the best equipment that we need to do the job. Right. And, and, and there you go. I, I love that because there was actually some thought to, to those that are going to try this later. Right. And I, I think that there I was hope, a, yeah, I, I, I hoped that, you know, we could find something that was so simple, so cheap that, you know, schools could do it and choirs yeah. could do it and everybody could, could do it. I think, um, a lot of choirs did, but of course, a lot of choirs didn't too, because there, there were it was it was a little bit complicated, it was. Um, and and schools they just had they had so many issues that they had to fight through. Right. Just get right. you know getting getting kids to to get onto their you know they had to have the right equipment and internet connections to be able to join classes at all. And so the idea of let's go upgrade our choir was just you know yeah. it was just too <laughs> much for schools to 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 imagine. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, um, but mostly. So like amateur choirs and people, people kind of like me who, who knew something about audio, but weren't, weren't pros. Audio professionals. I, yeah. I think if, yeah. if I, if I knew too much, I wouldn't have found it as rewarding. I sure. it wouldn't have been a learning experience. Right. I would have been annoyed working with junky equipment and being outdoors and like, you know, here's the, <laughs> the wind and rain blowing on all my, all my mixer. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tolerate that stuff. Um, but we sort of knew the right amount, but not too much to be willing to do this crazy thing. Right. And, and the other people who adopted it too, I think a, a lot of yeah. people were either like a, you know, retired tech person or, or, or someone who was kind of learning it. And, and the learning part was interesting to them at the right. same time as doing it. It was all, all the events had their unique challenges. One of my favorite stories to tell was the Sunday before Easter in 2021, we had um, two consecutive church choirs that just needed to get their, their recording for their Easter Sunday, you know, service. And it was a torrential, kind of like today, but just <laughs> torrential downpour all day long. And we were like, okay, we're renting a U-Haul for the equipment, but we're just going to hand out these microphones. And we had our big, you know, <laughs> rain, waterproof, everything. Our checklist was in plastic. It was, and then we didn't, so when you're inside your car, you could hear this. And we're like, how is this recording going to sound? Yeah. But since it's all digital, it all comes from this mixer and the microphones. Mic when, the microphones pointed right towards And they mouth. were very directional. So you couldn't really hear the, the ambient noise, yeah. right? And the when we, w we got back home and listened to the recording, we were like, this sounds amazing. You couldn't hear water on the roof. You couldn't, I mean, you would never, like, we were so cold. We were like, I remember being done with some of those outdoor cold, wet events and be like, I need soup. I just want to hold it in my hand. Yeah. I'm like, it's shivering. And, but it, it, it was just, it didn't matter. It was just a challenge that we could absolutely tolerate just once, you know? <laughs> yeah. She, she made hot potatoes for somebody. I did. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like actual potatoes. That was, that was something someone just put on Facebook. Oh, well, you know, in the olden days, they would go to work, to school and with their hot potatoes in their pockets. And then it would still be a little warm when they were walking home. And I'm like, you know, why not? So I'd like bake a bunch of potatoes and be like, anybody with cold hands, I will hand you a hot potato. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, it just makes it fun. That's the type of stuff that it makes those, yeah. those type of uh, situations unique. And I was like, okay, kids, we're having potatoes tonight. <laughs> oh, man, did you have another drive required today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so any plans, you know, to do, are you going to do like uh, anniversary type of events in the future? Yeah, you know, will you revisit these at some point? I don't think we're going to recreate them, but um, we might <laughs> invite people to go do singing. I think that that's an, another thing that, I think doesn't happen with the choruses don't really do very often, but we were, but, but the pandemic kind of forced it to happen is that we would just organize a group of random singers, not necessarily a whole group sometimes, and just say, anybody want to do X, you know, some, some yeah. piece that, that a lot of people have done before. And, 
and at that time when you know when when people had time on their hands it, yeah you know random group of people could come together and and just just sing something that that was familiar to them even though the people weren't familiar at all they, right. they had done the music before or or sometimes they were just so good at reading it they could do it but it, it was sort of a a pickup choir you know you have pickup yeah. sports games um, right. you don't hear Amateur. about that that yeah. doesn't happen in regular life. No, I, actually, I like that term, too though, busy. pick up choir. Yeah. And actually, we do that when we, like, let's say we're showing it in our library or in a church parish hall or something. We'll start by having everyone sing a, a familiar song, you know, oh, who knows this song? And we'll just make up harmony. Bryce will play the piano a little bit. And it's, you know, because yeah. that's sort of, it, it helps people get into the mindset of, what we were trying to preserve in that time. Yeah, I, I I think it's terrific. And thank you both for taking a little bit of time to to discuss it. What a great idea that you got to see through fruition. And it would have been great if you just stopped it there, but now you made a documentary out of it. Pretty right. incredible. That, that has been exciting. It's it's definitely there's so much learning, you know, the in the in films. Ever, there's so many films out there and now now we're like oh no we're competing against big budget stuff or whatever um but the the people who love the the people who love making music together really really connect to it yeah um i i don't know if it, it's probably not going to play in theaters and stuff we we've been showing it in libraries churches senior centers um we've showed it about 25 times now um mm -hmm. in in different venues like that and um and it, everybody everybody who's enjoyed who's who's seen it has enjoyed it and uh, and you know said said good things that, like oh that brought back the oh yeah i remember we had to do that um you know they we, we have an example of a of a zoom uh a zoom choir rehearsal that went terribly wrong you know we have a recording of that you've got so, bloopers so why it doesn't work <laughs> the, the highs and the lows you have yeah. to get there. yeah and and we actually had someone who watched it who who f had been in the healthcare industry, which was yeah. so yeah. different, you know, well, just yeah. horrible. Essential and said, for... yeah, and and said that that they had no idea the good stuff that was going on at the same time, and it was really interesting to see a positive story come from that incredibly horrible time. Yeah, well, I, I've I've said that uh, often is that y yes. The, the overall experience kind of negative, but there was some positives that came from that time that we will probably right. never have that time again. Hopefully we right. never have that time and we probably yeah. didn't take as, as good advantage as we should have for that downtime. I mean, when is the time right. when basically the whole country is going to be stuck at home? That's just not going to happen again. Hopefully. Yep. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. it was it was a unique time, and I love those stories where you know it's it, it, you guys have done it. A lot of other people have come up with ideas that kind of made positive use out of that time, and right. look what's grown right. out of it. I mean, I mean, you're taking right. this stuff and and kind of paying it forward, and now you've got this documentary that we can look back on forever and kind of remind right. us about that time period. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we, we we made we made a lot of connections with people that we never would have met otherwise. Yeah, we. Um, Catherine was saying, you know, before before the pandemic, she knew maybe four or five choir directors, and now we know about we fifty know. or something. Lots. Um, just Amazing. because we 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 went through this together, and um, and it, we also know our people from the other choruses around the country yeah. that have, you know, whether we worked together to solve problems or whether we just now share our, wow, look at this new group that I started up or I'm making this creative project and I want you yeah. to know about it. And so it's really, it's been such a great connecting. Well, experience. who knows where that, those connections will lead. You know, That's you right. might, you might uh, turn that into a different event down the road somewhere. You never know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Bryce, Catherine, thank you guys so much. This has been terrific. Good for you for the idea. And I, I, I love the fact, like I would have enjoyed talking with you just about the idea, but the fact that it turned yes. into a documentary is kind of amazing. Now, good for you. It, it kind of amazes us too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the project or the documentary is called The Drive to Sing. 
It's on Amazon, yeah. soon to be on uh, some other platforms. Yep, I, just I Google guess, for it. It's, it's yeah, easy, it comes it's right up. I did days. that before I came on. It comes right up. So not hard yeah. to find. Yeah, and we, we would love to show it in person in some more places. So li public libraries and churches and senior centers have been the best places so far to show it in person. Yeah. And then all the people who can't go, they can watch it online. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I know that, uh, you know, my son that does the podcast with me, um, he's his day jobs as a librarian. He's children's library. Oh, nice. He's he's planning on showing it um, at the at the county library. Oh, like, great. Awesome. Yeah. So he's going to have a little event uh, there at the local library. And, and Excellent. Show. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah so I'll, I'll know if you want us to pictures. zoom in. Yeah, I'll send you some pictures of that because that'll be right. That'll be pretty, uh, pretty Super. great. And he's. He's one that I never would have thought because he's not musical. I never would have thought that he uh, would have been interested. He absolutely loved it with that. So he's like, he he's like, oh, I got to show this at the library. So yeah, pretty uh, pretty Very cool. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, last thing before we wrap up, um, where can we find out more about the documentary? Where can we find the two of you on social media? Hmm. All right. The drive to sing.com is our website. Great. And uh, yeah, I think it's it's also the drive to sing on Facebook. The the drive to sing documentary on Facebook is our is our page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's we're, we're that's pretty terrific. easy to find. Do you do you guys have uh, like individual accounts that we can kind of look out for you? Yeah. So I'm Catherine Troop Denny on Facebook and <laughs> and, and Bryce Denny on Facebook. Oh, very nice. Very nice. All right. Well, if you'll hold on one second. Well, how great a story it, it was this. Uh, Bryce and Catherine Denny, I absolutely love the uh, drive to sing idea and the uh, kind of the driveway choir project, I think is what, uh, what they're calling it. Terrific. You know, I grew up my, uh, I've mentioned on the podcast before, my grandfather was a Baptist uh, minister, kind of old school Baptist. And I grew up with uh, choirs and, and going to, to church quite a bit. And I, you know, my favorite part of church was the choir. I absolutely loved listening to them sing. And they mentioned a little bit about that feeling you get when, uh, when you're listening to, uh, to a choir where it, whether it's, you know, at church or someone doing a, a Christmas carols or or a, a, a just a choir that gets together to to make music, there's that feeling that when when you hear a group of people kind of harmonizing and singing together, it's um, it can be very emotional and you get those chills type of feelings. So I absolutely can understand that um, missing of of that type of feeling. A lot of people go. To, to churches or to choir performances or practices as a way to connect with people and kind of stay connected. So when we lost that, you know, for several months there in 2020, you know, this would be a way for people to get together. I love it. I, I think that's a, an amazing idea and good for them for having the kind of forethought to make it into a documentary so that we can kind of memorialize this, you know, moment in time. I, I just think terrific. If you're able to, to support them by watching the um, drive to sing, please do so. You know, let's, let's support people out there putting positive energy into the world. I, I think that would be terrific. Hope you enjoyed uh, the interview. If you're finding us for the first time, you know, we, we do a lot of these documentary style interviews and I love to highlight projects that I, you know, I think are a little under the radar and we want to bring the, you know, they're good enough. Everybody should be watching them, but maybe they're not getting seen quite as much. Love to bring those uh, uh, people that are making those onto the program. And if you go back through our interviews, the majority of our interviews are with actors musicians and authors but we have had a very large amount of uh, documentary style, style interviews so if you enjoy good documentaries go back through our interviews and you'll find a ton 
of great content to watch. I think the the newest one that that we did was um, about there was a gentleman that put a mini series on uh, Max about telemarketing. You know, and I, I've mentioned that I've done telemarketing in the past. Very difficult, uh, not a great industry. That documentary was terrific, and he came on the program to um, to talk about that. Uh, we had the best time. So, so just kind of go through our catalog, and I guarantee you'll find a ton of stuff to watch if uh, documentaries is your thing. If you'd like to support us, and we'd appreciate that, a couple of easy ways to uh, to do that. Um, if you prefer to watch, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. We just ask that you subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, but it really does help us out. Um, if you prefer to listen, you know, a lot of people listen to their podcast, just subscribe wherever you're listening at, whatever application you're using, that'll help us as well. IMDB, which is the Entertainment Database, recently named us one of its top 100 podcasts. That'd be a big deal under any circumstances, but the fact that there's 15 million podcasts that they were picking from to make a top 100 list, pretty special to us. And there's a real easy way that you can help us. Um, if you go to imdb.com, imdb.com, and just look up the Two Opinionated Podcast. That's all you have to do. Just bring the page up. That traffic on the page really helps us out so if you could do that imdb.com to opinionated podcast we'd appreciate that we uh have put out 682 episodes so far and counting we normally put out three or four a week um you can find all of those audio and video on our website meistercon.com so please check us out there as well thank you guys so so much till next time bye everybody Hi, everybody. I'm once again here to ask for your support. It's been a big year for the Two Opinionated Podcast. Back in February, we got to live out a dream, moderate for William Shatner here in our hometown. In May, we passed 100,000 downloads on our YouTube channel, and we followed that up in June with 50,000 downloads on the audio side. We recently posted our 600th episode, which is pretty good volume, for just a uh, father and son operation. You know, not too many podcasts can keep that volume up. We've been doing this now for four and a half years, 600 plus episodes. We recently hit 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is a really big deal for us because we've always gotten the views, but have struggled to get people to subscribe. So that 1,000 was a big deal for us. And best of all, we were recently named one of the top podcasts on IMDb, which is the entertainment database. You know, those that are ahead of us, we came in at number 82. Those that are ahead of us are bigger companies like Disney, mostly Marvel, and Joe Rogan, that type of uh, podcast. So for us, being just a, a small West Virginia father and son podcast to be in the top 100 out of 15 million, it's a pretty big deal for us. So thank you for everything you've done for us so far. Got a couple little ways, though, that you can help us, and they're free, and they're really easy. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel yet, please go to YouTube. It's under MeisterCon Pod. Just hit subscribe. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. really helps us a ton. And maybe even more important, if you could go to IMDB, IMDB.com, Look up the Two Opinionated Podcast and just look around the page. Just having that traffic on the page really helps us out. So that's a couple of easy ways that you can support us, even if you're not listening or watching all of the time. And we want you to listen and watch because I think that our, our guest list, I would put up against anybody, any other show, podcast, anybody out there. I think our guest list holds up. So please check us out. You you probably will find somebody that you like or maybe somebody that you didn't know you liked but kind of discovered them on there. There's tons of that. If you're into music, we have that too. If you like books, we've got authors 
on there. If you if you're more into what goes on behind the scenes in the entertainment world, you know we've got producers, directors, um, video artists, anything you can think of that happens behind the scenes, we've had them on the show. So definitely check us out. Thank you guys so so much. Until next time, bye everybody.